Ready to walk the gates? Let's talk about the seals of the Zonai. Necronomicon is coming. Each time that you walk one of the gates of the Necronomicon, you are going to need the seal for the Zonai that you are working with that month. So I'm going to try to go through these, and I might stumble a little bit, but let's just start. So let's see if I can kind of show these here. Your first one, you got Nana for the moon. Um, the number is 30, so you'd be doing 30 circles around and you are to make this on let's see I believe it's a slab of silver so you could use silver sharpie marker um, and you have to when you make this first seal you do it on the 13th day of a moon cycle where you would be purifying yourself by not eating meat not spilling your seed if you know what I mean and then, so you do that for the 13 days of the moon cycle, and then on the 13th day, you would make this seal. You would wrap it up in silk if you have it. I didn't have it, so I just hid it away, and I hid it away in darkness. So I think I hid it actually under my dresser. Um, and then, so you're on the 13th day, you make the seal, then you follow the moon cycle, all the way through and then on the next 13th day of the moon cycle you would let's see three days prior to that you would invoke the male deity or the masculine energy in the morning and then the feminine energy at night <clears throat> seven days prior to doing a gate walk you were to eat no meat i'm actually mostly vegetarian so that's not really that hard for me and then you would walk the gate. Um, in order to successfully walk the gates and make sure that I didn't mess up my timing, I actually use the Gates of the Necronomicon book, and there's a calendar in the back that tells you when you can do it, and I think it has dates up until 2017. But once you do the first one, then you just follow the moon cycles on a calendar to re realize when's the next time you do a gate walk. I've got to stop the cat from moving my computer. So then, let's talk about, yeah, let's talk about Nana for a second. You got moon energy, you got emotions, you got psychic abilities, and you have different things that go along with the moon. Really focus on hidden energies, emotions, and psychic abilities. These things might come up with some troubles, and you might develop better abilities during that first month of the gatewalk. Then we would have, let me see, I gotta make my camera visible to me. We have, hmm, Nebo right here. Um, color is blue, number is 12. So once again, to make the seal, you would make it, the way that I did it was, okay, that first, I purified myself that the first 13th day, stop it, Pixie. The first 13th day, I made the seal and then I walked the gate. Um, you know, during the next cycle, the three day, yeah, during the next cycle. Then after I walked that gate, I made the seal for the next one. So I would make the seal for Nebo. And the color's blue, so white paper, blue Sharpie marker, or let's see, where do you got to put it on? This color's blue, and the metal is known as Quicksilver, and you have to write it on perfect parchment, so that's actually fine to do it with paper. And then you, when you would walk the <clears throat> Nebo gate, we're talking about Mercury, we're talking about money, communication, really, really getting in, into working with how you communicate with people, maybe things at your job might happen where you're going to need to communicate more or work better with other people. Um, some things in, in community might change for you. You might end up having more friends. You might have end up having less friends. Might be good, might be bad, but either way, you're developing as a person through the gatewalking. Then the next one we have is Easter or Ishtar. And let's see, she has the biggest explanation for her seal. But this is her seal. You have to engrave it on copper. 
So you could do gold Sharpie or a brass or copper colored Sharpie on paper. What? Yep. Or if you are able to get a slab of copper, you just engrave it on there. And once again, wrap it up in silk. All of these you kind of have to wrap up in silk and hide. But if you don't have silk, just hide it somehow. Her number is 15, so you would walk around and hit 15. I don't know if I mentioned it about Nebo, but his number is 12, so you would have walked 12 around the gate. Um, so then, after you do that one, that night make the next seal, which would be for Shamash. Shamash, the sun, really, the sun has to do with really bringing out your personality, what you really are inside. So anything that might be hidden that or that you are trying to suppress within yourself that might come out you might have to deal with that you might have to learn how, how to balance the person that you really are with whatever your ambitions are or you might have some conflicts with other people in your life that don't exactly like the habits that you might have that you might be trying to suppress and Shabash's number is 20 so you'd circle it 20 times after you do that gatewalk, you make the seal for Nurgle. Nurgle, right here. Nurgle is Mars, so you're talking about passion. You're talking about war. I'm trying to get my cat to stop moving it. She has a little bit too much energy today. So, when you're talking about Mars, you're talking about war, you're talking about passion. When I did the gatewalking and I was going through the month of Mars, yeah, when I was going through the month of Mars, I had some things come up at work that were, you know, very difficult situations that I had to really, really try my best to succeed at. <clears throat> Nurgle's number is eight, so you would circumambiguate the gate eight times. Then, let's see, the big guy. After you do the after you do the Nurgle gate, you would make the seal for. Marduk. Marduk is Jupiter. Jupiter's talking about expansion. Anything that you have in life that you want to blossom or expand could be your pocketbook, could be a hobby, could be some creative ideas. Though anything positive and negative, by the way, is going to expand and get bigger. So you are going to have to deal with, if you had a small problem last month, it might get bigger. If you were really, really having a fun time with the challenges, you might be getting better at it. This is about expanding yourself, stepping into a more expanded version of you where you're able to be more expressive and more expansive. So then after Marduk, you would, here's, this, here's the kicker. You have to do the Gate of Ganzir three days after the Gate of Marduk. But since we're talking about seals here, we're going to skip that one. Because it's a little bit of a mystery that I'm not ready to reveal yet. I don't know if anybody else has figured out the Gate of Ganzir. But if you have anything to say about it that might help me, fantastic. Let's see, our next one. After you walk the gate of Ganzir, make the seal for the next one, which would be Adar, which is Saturn. Saturn has a lot to do with restriction, restriction and law. So Saturn, if there's anything kind of wrong going on in your life, if you're, it, like, if you break the speed limit a lot, you might get a little kickback for that. If somebody is kind of you know, treating you negatively and they're doing a blatant wrong, that they might get karmically hit for that. Really think about following the rules and everything balancing out with the gate of Adar. And oh, have I I don't think I talked about how or what material to make Adar on. So I just reopened it up. So Adar you would have to it's a lead and plater bowl, so you could just use silver Sharpie marker again on a piece of paper. Let's backtrack a little bit. Um, I believe that Marduk, Marduk is purple, so do the seal uh, in purple marker, and this number's 10. And you would have Nurgle, who is Mars, which is before that, and just backtracking. You would iron, so once again, kind of a silver. Um... 
So yeah, now a curious thing that I'm still in the steps of figuring out that has to do with the Eurelia text would be the gate to the outside. Now, here's, let me see if I can articulate this. I just got to open the book back up. So, in the testimony of the Mad Arab, the first part, you have the story where the Mad Arab go is up in the mountains, and he, he wakes up in the middle of the night, and he hears a ritual going on, and when they chase him, and when the cultists chase him, and then they vanish, when he goes back to their ritual space, he sees those three symbols, the Ara, Star, the Bandar, and the Elder Sign, and in the book, he actually says, on page 11, he says, these are the signs carved upon the gray stone that was the gate to the outside. So if you think about it, you have those three symbols would be described as the gate to the outside. So that would be the gate that you would walk around. And then you want to talk about seals again. The necklace that he has, and the one that I have that I have to recharge right here, because it's out in daylight now, but I wanted to show it in this video. Um, so in that sense, you have the gate and the seal, just like the other seven. When it comes to how many number of times to circumnavigate the gate, I think I have a handle on that. Hair. And so those are, I just discussed over the, the nine gates. The, the mid gate, the gate of Ganzir, doesn't technically have a seal or a physical gate to walk around, but I hope that this was a little bit of an explanation on how to make the seals and how when to work with them, and just keep giving me some more questions so I can generate some ideas and troubleshoot the Book of the Black Earth. Good hunting.